I started Wave of Conviction Elementalist, with the intention to transition into Hexblast Occultus. But how has that gone so far? Well, the best way I can describe it is, it's been a blast. One might even say a hex blast. Though I have refined my plans just a little bit. Instead of swapping over to the full occultist setup, I decided to instead stay elementalist for a bit, using the Martyr of Innocence to give myself enough fire damage to keep Shaper of Flames active. This is because Martyr of Innocence is a quite good early weapon anyway. I was in no rush to respect my entire ascendancy before doing Eternal Lab anyway, and Elementalist just feels really good with the additional AoE. And speaking of things that feel good, so does Hexblast. Right now, I've done a lot of yellow maps to farm up, and of course some early reds. So far, the skill has been able to handle everything I could throw at it, including some Sanctum runs. One of which was pretty cracked. I got 60% increased move speed and 50% more damage. Which was awesome. It felt like the god run, and in a lot of ways it was, since I did reach and defeat the final boss, though I did somewhat rob myself of the ultimate epic showdown because I decided to do the final boss in a tier 1 map just to be safe, and that did end in a little bit of a disappointment. Though I'm very much looking forward to getting back to that point and fighting a much harder and hopefully much more interesting version later. Now I'm not going to go over every single item I'm wearing. If you want to know about that, then do check down below. In the description you can always see my profile for the most up-to-date version of my character, or I'll also have a POB with a snapshot of my gear for around day one. But I did want to talk about a couple of unique items since they're pretty important. The first being the Martyr of Innocence. The reason that I'm using this is, like I said at the beginning, to enable Shaper of Flames. A majority of my hit needs to be fire damage which isn't all that hard since I'm scaling fire damage and not chaos damage. And I know I could have just gone occultist to this point, but I wanted to keep the all damage ignites for a little more synergy with my next item, which is Azanath's Gentle Touch. Of one hand, it has the downside of destroying corpses, which means I won't have quite as much ignite prolif, but on the upside, each explosion inflicts its own ignite because all damage I deal ignites, so it doesn't really matter. And it's a great way to get Temp Chain's Curse on hit, which synergizes really well with everything else the build does. Could I have instead used Vixens? Could I have instead used Rare Glove? Honestly, yes, I could have. But Azanath has felt really good so far, and as an early investment of One Divine, it felt well worth it to me. The last key unique is Barrack's Respite. This way, I have Ignite Prolif without having to use Ignite Prolif support, and additionally, I have Shock Prolif because Hexblast says all damage can shock, all damage can ignite, and all damage can freeze, and because it has pretty hefty base damage, you get a surprising amount of shocks, including on bosses. It's probably not going to full shock an Uber Cirrus or anything, but for what I'm doing right now, especially when I'm progressing my Atlas, it's more than good enough. Though, do keep in mind, it says can shock, not will automatically shock, so you might want to get a little bit of shock chance, such as through the Curse Mastery. So, overall, Forbidden Sanctum has been quite fun. I'm enjoying my build, and I'm looking forward to continuing to scale it. Though, I do have one complaint, and that complaint is rare monsters. Or, more accurately, that the new text absolutely should have been colored before the leak went live. At the very least, give us the option to color it, even if it's not going to have official colors. Because right now, it's very difficult, if not impossible at a glance, to tell what's the most dangerous mod especially when there's something like Minions Explode, I'm not necessarily going to see it in among the other three lines of text, and if I miss it, I'm probably going to explode the pack which is going to explode me. One of the best features of the Arch Nemesis system was every modifier was a short keyword. Once you looked up what it did, it was very easy to remember it, and because most types of monsters had a very clear visual marker, it was honestly pretty easy to see what a rare did at a glance. And even if you didn't recognize the visuals for something like Sentinel or Chaos Weaver, you'd know the second you looked at the giant colored text. But instead, now we have really small white text that's very easy to lose, and maybe I'm just blind, but sometimes I can't even see it at all with everything else going on until it's far too late to matter. Either the rare's dead, or I am. Usually it's for rare, but you don't win them all. Especially not when you're undergeared. So hopefully this will be patched in sometime soon, because otherwise it's been an excellent league start. 
The other concern I have is in regards to the League mechanic itself, and that is, it doesn't really feel like it integrates all that well into the gameplay loop of Path of Exile. It's very different, and very well executed. And honestly, if it was a $20 indie game, I'd be happy to buy it. But there's a definite annoyance of having to leave my map to go into the Sanctum to save a room, when I'd rather just run by and have a room automatically get saved, or I could go into the Sanctum if I wanted to run it then and there. But that's been my experience so far with Path of Exile 318 Forbidden Sanctum. But what about you? Have you got any interesting drops? Are you enjoying your League start build? And what do you think about the League mechanic? Let me know all of those thoughts down in the comments below. And before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. Or you can support completely for free just by leaving a like. While you're down there, get subscribed, especially if you want to hear more about Hexblast, because as I keep playing, I'm going to continue to document my progression. But that's all for me today. I hope you learned something, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.